شهر رمضان الذي أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعين به ونتوكل عليه والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وخاتم الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم وهو أحسن القائلين وأصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب وله وزينة وتفاخر بينكم بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم for the purification of the souls, the enlightenment of the hearts for the hastening of the reappearance of the awaited Savior عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف enlighten your souls and the atmosphere with the recitation of salawat upon Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Respected elders, scholars, brothers, Salamun alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. 115 times does the Holy Quran mention dunya. This is a subject that is often viewed negatively in our discussions. I remember sometimes in our discussions with the youth and others when somebody says for example they're hungry let's get some meal someone turns to them and says you are ahl dunya often if you express a need people say you are too attached to this world as a joke but the realization is has anyone ever suggested that this dunya is good and the idea that often it is a subject of condemnation. People look at this world in a negative manner because of the existence of so many ayat of the Quran and riwayat which look at this world in a negative light. However, it may not always be the case because once Amir al-Mu'mineen wa Mawla al-Muttaqeen Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi In a well-known narration saw an individual in the mosque praying all the time morning, lunchtime, evening constantly praying salah so he looked at him and said fi mafmoon al-hadith in general sense he said to him what is going on? Who looks after your family? You are constantly here in the mosque. He said, my brother, he works and he provides for my family. Amir al-Mu'mineen, of course, replied that in the eyes of Allah, his brother is greater than you. Even though this individual is what is in the prayer mat. However, the other person is engaged in this world, but in a positive way. In a positive manner, serving others, isn't it? And sometimes, by the way, when you see someone constantly talking about dunya negatively, oh, I hate this dunya, this dunya is rubbish, this dunya is bad. Amir al-Mu'mineen once saw somebody like this. He said, do you know why you mention it so many times badly, negatively? It's because you have so much love of dunya in your heart. You can't take it away, so you claim that you hate it. But this constant, 
condemnation may not always be the right thing if it is not supported with the right attitude to this world. The Holy Prophet of Islam, Rasul al-Azam Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, is narrated to have said, لَيْسَ مِنْ حُبِّ الدُّنْيَا طَلَبْ مَا يُصْلِحُكْ It is not the love of this world seeking what is good for you in this world. Yuslihuk here means what is beneficial for you in this world and akhirah. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا The Quran says, وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكِ In the story of Qarun, cousin of Musa alayhi salam, many people would come and condemn, okay, to be wealthy is wrong. To be, for example, successful is wrong. No! It is how this impacts you and how you use it. Dunya is being created for a purpose by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Hadid, Ayah number 20, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this world, talks about dunya. Often when we speak about dunya, it refers to materialism and being attached towards the pleasures of this world at the expense of serving Allah and preparing for akhirah. This is what it means. When there is condemnation, when the Holy Sixth Man, peace and blessings be upon him, is narrated to have said, Ra'sul, or Hubbu dunya, Ra'su kull khati'ah, that the love of this world is the head of every problem. He means that when individuals misuse this existence and put all their efforts in here, not that the individual lives a dignified, honorable life. You know why I started with this? Because if we do not present Islam in the right way, we will lose our youngsters. If our children, our youth are grown up always with condemnation of this world. I see some people, you know, at the time of COVID, once one of the mu'mineen in Europe, I was sitting, I was talking to him. He said, La'natullah on COVID-19. Why are you doing la'na on a creation of Allah? Allah has created this virus or not? Is it the fault of the virus or fault of ourselves? Yes. Some people do la'na on this dunya. In front of their children, in front of... Make sure everything is contextualized so that they understand what is it that you're saying? This constant condemnation of this dunya, this world may not always be fruitful in the minds of our youngsters and our youth are saying, why are you always down and negative about this? So you know, I am using it for the purpose of serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes? Here the Quran talks about dunya but in a very beautiful parable. A mathal, as a multitude. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses these amthal, why? To simplify concepts and to make it easily digestible and absorbed in the minds and in the hearts of you and I as believers. So Allah wa ta'ala, he mentions dunya 115 times. How many times does he mention akhirah? You would think 300 times. The word akhirah. Yes, of course there are other descriptions. Yawm al-taghabun, yawm al-fasl, other descriptions of akhirah. But the word akhirah, is mentioned subhanallah 115 times dunya how many 115 akhirah 115 if this dunya was so condemned and it's all negative why it's mentioned exactly the same as akhirah a dunya mazra'atul akhirah you are planting in this world yes Yes, the narrations look at it sometimes in a negative lens to warn people not to be too attached. That's the issue. Here, beautifully, in this ayah, in Surah Al-Hadid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before giving the mathal, says dunya has five things, five features. إِنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا اِعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا First is what? What's the feature of this world? The, the 
aspects of this world. Quran says, La'ib. Now, La'ib comes from the Arabic, Li'ab. What's the Li'ab? Saliva. They say, what do you do with the saliva? Usually, you either swallow it or you spit it. Yes? It doesn't last long in your mouth. Hopefully, you don't keep it too long. Yes? It's swallowed or it's taken out. Yes? Something, shay'un yazul la qimata lah. Something that goes quickly has no value. What's the value of the saliva? Yes. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this dunya, one of the main characteristics is that it's like a game, quick. Comes and goes, yes. And people run after it to fulfill their desires, to feel better, yes. But it is not long-lasting. That's why, you know, sometimes I see in your in Western world, on the cars, they put this sticker. YOLO, it's called YOLO. What this means, you only live once. So they say, do whatever you want, because it's only one time. And they have this bucket list. You know what bucket list is? Bucket list is things that you have to do before you die. They would put like 20 things I must do before I die. Why? Because they say, this is it. This is the, uh, the life that we live. Afterwards, there's nothing. Yes? Quran says, it's, no. إِنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا Number one, لَعِبْ It's quick. You know, when you play a game, it finishes. It's quickly. Then he says, وَلَهْوٌ It's distractions. It's something that occupies you. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُلْهِكُمْ أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Today, we live in a world, I call it the pandemic of distraction. Not destruction. Distraction. Meaning what? We are very short in our concentration span. This phone and all the gadgets had make us not focus. We are quick, very itchy to get to my phone and check. Yes? What's going on? I cannot focus enough. There is too many things that distract me. And it has manifested in this world more than other times. Some people today, they say, I don't know, before this smartphone, how people used to live. How did you live before you have the phone that you can always be in touch and see the world and understand what's going on and communicate with the world? Yes. It has changed our lives. Quran says, Wazina, it's ornament, it's a decoration. Yes. What, what does this mean? When you see something beautiful, you want to have it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there is the obsession to possess. I want, the I want culture. This dunya characterized by the temptation to keep taking more. As the narration says, it's like sea water. It's salty. The more you drink, the more thirsty you become. And the more you want to take water. Yes. And similarly, one of the main means, means this dunya is a zina, the Quran says, is what? By looking at others who are supposedly having many things and we don't have, like celebrities. In the many parts of the world, there is a celebrity craze, meaning what? Whatever that well-known celebrity has, I want to have. Or I would love to be like him or her. You speak to people today, and they idolize certain celebrities. In the world of sport, in the world of movies, sometimes even in the world of religion. Yes? People sometimes come to us and say, Oh, mashallah, you're a celebrity. I say, be careful not to use this word with ulama. We are not celebrities. Yes? Celebrity is there to somehow pull crowds and to show off and to do certain things, yes? There is a difference between a celebrity and a role model. Role model is different. People can look up to and learn from, yes? But the danger here is one of the features of this dunya is that it has this pulling factor towards certain individuals. وَتَفَاخُرٌ بَيْنَكُمْ And it's a place of boasting social status. 
which happens no, now more with social media. I am this, I have this, I've gone to this. My often advice to mu'mineen and mu'minat online social media is, if Allah has blessed you with something, don't publicize it to the world. Oh, but I have to tell people, I am going on this, sometimes I see this post on Facebook and Instagram and this. Alhamdulillah, so start with a Muslim thing. Alhamdulillah, I am going to holiday to the US and Dubai on this hotel and this, and then I'm going ziyara, and then you put a smiley emoji, happy. What is this doing to others? Those who cannot go, like, why he has and I don't have. It creates a lot of problem between husband and wife. When people start comparing their lives towards others. Oh, this person, his wife, every day, I am amazed my wife, every day she prepares for me the best food and she does this. Why are you telling the world? What is it? You're making yourself feel better? Because then others will have this depression, mental health problems due to social media because they only see good things. Nobody comes on social media, very few, and say, you know, Ya Rabbi, ana al-mudhnib al-muqassir al-haqir al-faqir. I am someone who has made so many sins and errors and mistakes. Ya Allah, forgive me. People say, why are you telling us? Social media, it's about boasting many times. Sometimes it's good, of course. Everything has a good usage, no doubt. But its correct usage must be applied by ulama, by, uh, uh, taught by ulama, by our mu'mineen and mu'minat. The e akhlaq I call it, or the i akhlaq on social media. And finally, the fifth thing is, وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ There's incredible pressure to gain more wealth and to indeed have more children and build the family. Now, beautifully, ulama have said, these five we have just heard in the ayah, talk about the journey of this individual in this world from beginning till the end. How today the first eight years are considered years of playing. First eight years. Then the next eight years is about what? Looking for attention. Opposite gender. Yes, next eight years. Between eight and sixteen. Lahwan. Yes. Then the Quran says, Wazina. So the next eight years from 16 on to 24 is what? It's about worrying about appearances. How do I look? Wazinatun, Quran says. Then the next eight years is what? It's about working hard to make sure I am accepted in society. Now from 24 to 32, I want to have a good job. Yes. Quran says what? Watafakhurun. Now I want to be accepted. Then the next eight years, not only eight years, 32 now or 38 or till end of life is what? وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ Quran here in five steps summarizes this world, this dunya, what we seek, what people seek. That's all they seek in many of their eyes. Now, here Allah then says, but wait, there is a problem here. If that is your objective, Yes, if it is takathor, if it is zina, if it is lahu, if it is la'ab, there is a problem here. But let me explain it to you through a mathal, a parable. He says in Surah Al-Hadid, كَمَثَلِ غَيْثٍ أَعْجَبَ الْكُفَّارُ نَبَاتَ This is like rain that the kuffar are pleased with. Question. In this ayah, who are the kuffar? When you read sometimes in the Holy Quran, not every term is what you and I think it means. In Arabic, kufr means to cover something. Here, Mufassirin say, Allah says the parable is like when rain comes down and the kafir is pleased with the rain because it helps the crops. So, what is the relation with rejecting faith to this? They say here, kuffar does not mean the rejecter of faith. It means a farmer. Why? You say to me, all farmers are kuffar? No, astaghfirullah. No. A farmer covers the ground with the seeds. So you put the seed and then you cover the ground. So the term that's used in the Quran to refer to a farmer here 
is what? Kuffar. So don't always jump into conclusion. Refer to the Mufassireen, to the Riwayat of Ahl al-Bayt in order to understand. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in this. He says, كَمَثَلِ غَيْثٍ أَعْجَبَ الْكُفَّارُ نَبَعْتَ Now this farmer says, sees beautiful rain and the crop begins to grow. Now the farmer is happy. Good production, yes? Then he says what? ثُمَّ يَهِيجُ فَتَرَاهُ مُصْفَرًّا Then it becomes a stage where it begins to lose its beauty and withers away, becomes yellow. You know, like a plant or any crops starts to lose. Then, ثُمَّ يَكُونُ hitama. Then it completely becomes worthless. Like hitam means, you know, a small thread or becomes very much unusable. It disintegrates. This plant, initially, it's very nice. Then, in the autumn, it dies. Then it completely goes. And there's no nothing in it. Yes? This beautiful description in the Quran, a mathal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this dunya can be like this. It can look, you are becoming, you become very much amazed by it. Yes? It grows, but then it becomes nothing. It starts to wither down, and then, خلاص, it's gone. You have invested all your life in it, and at the end, there's nothing. Yes? Amir al-Mu'mineen wa Mawla al-Muttaqeen Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. He summarizes all this in three words. Beautiful hadith. As are all the arwayat of the Ahlul Bayt. Yes? He summarizes according to narration. It's narrated that he said, Ad-dunya taghurru wa taghurru wa tamur. Dunya has three things. Number one, taghur, it deceives. Number two, taghur, it harms. Number three, tamur, goes quickly. Taghurru wa taghurru wa tamur. Hence, when you look at the description about what the meaning of salah is, you know, sometimes for the focus in salah, sometimes this is good. It is narrated that Amir Mu'mineen says, this sitting between the two sajdas is an example of how long this world is. How long do we sit between one sajda to another? Two seconds? By the way, fiqhi point here. Many Mu'mineen, sometimes they don't even sit properly. Quickly they go into... Sajda. According to many maraja, this is wajib to sit. Yes, this ajulus ba'da sajda, you have to sit and you are in a state of tawazun, means you are, yes, and then you go into sajda, yes. But this is indicative of how short this existence is. That's why there is a beautiful description that we should be wary of about the dangers of this world. And remember, before I give you this, what the purpose is. The purpose is we should own this world. This dunya and materialism should not own us. Meaning what when I own it? It means I should be in control. I can give it away or I can gain. But when it owns us, we become slaves of it. And we have to do whatever to what please the owner, yes? That is zuhud, yes? An tamlika dunya wa laysa an tamluka ka dunya. And yes, zuhud is that you own the world, but not that the old world owns you. This dunya doesn't own you with materialism. Now, in Hadith al Mi'raj, finally, the Holy Prophet of Islam asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Man hum ahlud dunya. I'm not going to explain this in detail, but it's a, a good reminder about what we can indeed learn and apply into our lives. Qala ya Rabbi wa man ahlud dunya. The Holy Prophet in Mi'raj now asking, who are the people of this world? People of this world means what? People who attach themselves to this existence and that is their concern. That is my worry. That is what I want to work for. 
This world, this world, this existence, this dunya. Ahlul dunya. You know when he say Ahlul Bayt, yes. Ahlul Akhirah means the people of. That is what they're concerned. Here, some of the description is truly worrying for some of us. The riwayah says, the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ahlu dunya man kathura akluhu wa dhahkuh. Subhanallah. The first thing about the people of this materialistic world who are attaching themselves too much here is if they eat too much and they speak too much. Kathura akluhu and they laugh too much. Wa dhahkuh. Wa nawmuh and they sleep too much. Wa ghadabuh. And they are always angry. الرضا, they are very unlikely to be pleased with anything. They don't like anything. Everything you tell them, there is a problem in it. Yes? لا يعتذر إلى من أساء إليه. They never say sorry. Yes? To whomsoever they hurt. ولا يقبل معذرة من اعتذر إليه. Not only do they never apologize, they never accept the apology of someone else. Kaslan and ta'a. At the moment of worship, they are lazy. Shuja'un and al ma'siyah. At the time of sin, ah, they are like a brave warrior in the battlefield. Ready. Yes. Full energy. Amaluhu ba'id. They have long, prolonged hopes in this world. وَأَجَلُهُ قَرِيبٌ But they may die any minute. لا يحاسب نفسه Never did they hold themselves accountable. There is no محاسبة. قليل المنفعة They don't serve people. There is no use for them. They don't benefit others. كثير الكلام They talk too much. Yes. قليل الخوف They don't have this idea of fear of their sins, fear of their actions. But then this one is the biggest problem, I think, the next one. كثير الفرح عند الطعام They become very happy when they see food. Allahu Akbar. This is the biggest problem, I think, yes? Now, we must put this in context, because usually food, now someone will say, Mulana, at iftar time, I'm very happy. When there is food, huh? So this means I'm for people of this dunya? No, actually, Riwaya says, لِلْمُؤْمِنِ farhatan. The believers have two praiseworthy moments of happiness. فَرْحَةٌ عِنْدَ إِفْطَارِهِ There's a pleasure at the time of iftar. وَفَرْحَةٌ عِنْدَ لِقَاءِ رَبِّهِ And a, farha when, a pleasure when they meet Allah. So it's okay. Here we have to contextualize. كثير الفرح عند الطعام means what? It means that all their pleasure, all their happiness is obtained from food. Food is their main goal in life. That is what they live for. Yes. Then the riwayah continues. وَإِنَّ أَهْلَ الدُّنْيَا لَا يَشْكُرُونَ عِنْدَ الرَّخَاءِ The people of this world are not thankful when things are easy. They forget Allah. When they're going, it gets easy. It's not tough. They are not patient at times of hardship. Anything that's done by people, they belittle. They constantly praise themselves with things that they don't do or they're not supposed to praise themselves with. وَيَدْعُونَ بِمَا لَيْسَ لَهُمْ And they invite others towards things which they don't have. They have not practiced it, but they invite others to do it. وَيَتَكَلَّمُونَ بِمَا يَتَمَنَّونَ They're always talking about, I wish, I wish, I wish. That's it. They don't do anything. وَيَذْكُرُونَ مَسَاوِ النَّاسِ وَيَخْفُونَ حَسَنَاتَهُمْ They often talk about the problems of the people, but they always hide their own faults. He hired his own faults. Doesn't mean we should speak about our faults to people. Means they do not scrutinize themselves with their faults first before looking at others. Yes, that we must be busy with our shortcomings before looking at the shortcomings of others. These are points of reflection to perfect our akhlaq so that we are not of the people of this world. That means 
We have placed all our efforts into this existence, but actually become people of Akhirah. We pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of Ahlul Akhirah and to allow us to see this world in the way it is, to take the positives from it in his service, insha'Allah ta'ala. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salli lahum ala Muhammad wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin.